Dungar Sargon, deputy opinion editor of Newsweek, uh, is with us. Now, to be fair, uh, the answers to the fentanyl question are a lot more complicated and a lot less soundbitey than the answers to gun control and to gun deaths. Is that part of the reason, too? Honestly, it depends which gun deaths, right? There are a lot of gun deaths that Democrats don't want to talk about either, right? The ones that are happening on the streets in the cities that they run, for example, which is where most gun deaths happen, right? They won't talk about that either. I think you're 100% right that this is really about politics. But even more than that, Leland, it's about class. The people dying of fentanyl overdoses are poor and working class whites, people whose communities have been destroyed by NAFTA, by the way, a democratic policy that shipped their jobs over overseas. And so, you know, who cares about these people? Well, I'll tell you who they felt cared about them was Trump, who's the big enemy, of course, of the liberal media. So why would they take on the cause of these people? Right. And these people come from predominantly red states. We put up the map of where fentanyl deaths uh, happen the most in America. It's, it's where I come from, uh, from Missouri. Uh, and the rest of uh, red America, uh, effectively. I'm looking at the map. Uh, Michigan uh, blue at one point. Uh, Wisconsin has turned blue. Uh, Pennsylvania. But the rest of those states are red states um, that Republicans don't get much helping from helping either, do they? No, and that, I think that's what's really interesting, is why aren't Republicans talking about this more? And I think the Republican viewpoint, the kind of like bootstrapping free market point of view, where you basically leave people alone to their own devices and things will work out, and something like a drug addiction from that Republican um, you know, point of view is very much on the person themselves, so they don't see it as a rallying cry. But it's so, so sad and horrible that this is the leading cause of death among children. I mean, you would think that this is the kind of thing that both sides could be rallying around. And instead, all of these people have been totally right. abandoned by both sides. Right. We, we put this up. The fentanyl deaths per day, 196, is the equivalent of a 757 airliner crashing every single day, which the media would cover uh, on and on and on, obviously, if it was happening, with, and with good reason. But how much of this has to do with that the press doesn't want to cover it because the answers are inconvenient uh, effectively to Democrats and liberal intelligentsia who turn their backs on working class Americans. I think that I think you nailed it, Leland. The number one predictor for whether a county went to Trump or not was how many deaths of despair there were, deaths of despair being fentanyl and drug overdoses, alcoholism, deaths, and suicides, right? And the number one predictor for deaths of despair is how much a community was decimated by NAFTA, by the conscious decision of Democratic elites to offshore manufacturing and destroy the American working class while they benefited from the class divide. Yeah, it's crazy when you think also about how much fentanyl still comes uh, across the border. Uh, Allie Bradley's been doing some incredible reporting on that. We're going to check in with her on the issues tomorrow. Uh, Bach, it's always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. All right, back now. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.